Uh, so the first one is, I believe, July 18th for Logan and Amanda, and that's going to be at Ardmore Lake Club um, at 4.30? Yes. And then there's another one on, is it the 31st? Yes. July 31st, the same place that Lake Ardmore Club, but this one's at 2 p.m., right? So keep those things in mind coming up. We do. Can I announce the latest thing? Okay. There is a ladies' fellowship. Is it the 24th? Saturday the 24th at 10 a.m. here. And we'll get more details on that as that is approaching, but just want you guys to know that's coming. Uh, also, if you have not uh, registered for greater things in Oklahoma City and you want to do that, uh, please register. Um, if you want a discount code, just contact me and Global Harvest Church members get a discount code. If you want to go, there also are, last I heard, two or three volunteer positions available that will cover your conference fee if you want to volunteer. Okay, and it has to do with the media team and checking people in and all that. So that is an opportunity if you want to do that as well. I don't want to do that, so um, I'm, I'm not there to minister, right? I'm there to receive. But if you want to do that, that is available. All right. Praise God. Any announcements that I missed? I know we have men's meeting not this coming Saturday, but the Saturday after that also. And, uh, and the same day as ACT will be here, right? And if you haven't registered and want to, I'm sorry, you're too late. So, praise God. All right, let's stand. Let's make our offering declaration this morning. And uh, just thank God that we can give in the glory. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. It allows us to continue to function as a church. So, let's make this declaration together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money that's paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can come and give in one of these baskets or this chest. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is faithful. His grace is sufficient. He's good. Amen. He wants to prosper us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, at this time, let's dismiss our nursery, nursery workers, children's church as they go. And uh, know that they're going to have a good time in there. Amen. We're equipping a younger generation, amen. Yes, yes. Praise God. And equipping an older generation in here, amen. So, well, I want to start this morning with a new series called Supernatural Families. Amen. Supernatural Families, it's a good thing. Amen. And, you know, family is God's idea. Right? And, you know, family existed before the church. And, and the church was uh, the original unit by which God wanted to fill the earth with his glory. And now I'm, I'm definitely in favor of, of organized church. It's, it's scriptural. But, uh, you know, the marriage and family came before the nation of Israel and before the church. And uh, the church, the organized church, is a reflection of what the family is like. Yeah. And so if you have broken families and broken people, the church is going to be filled with broken families and broken people, yeah. right? And, and uh, the nation itself is a reflection of what the church looks like. Yeah. So if we want to have a nation that is following after God and that's living in godly principles, we have to focus 
on establishing godly families. Amen. Yes. Godly marriages. Yes. Godly children. Because the reality is a, a generation, right, um, when it comes to family and what it comes to um, training up our children and equipping our children, though a generation that doesn't value being part of the church, the next generation will not value God. Right. Amen. There's just no way around that. So we have to raise up a godly generation in the family. Amen. So we're going to talk about that the next few weeks. And uh, this morning I really want to talk, first of all, and Jamie's going to come help me in just a few moments, and we're going to give some testimonies. Glory. But I want to talk about supernatural marriage. Do we, do we need God moving in our marriages? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Right? There, there's a, there is a bombardment against marriage right now. Wow. Right. And uh, so I think we have to get a biblical perspective of what marriage and even a biblical perspective of what dating is supposed to look like. Right? Yes. Because here's the real danger in our society. Of course, you know, many people are turning from the church. Many people are turning from things like biblical ideas of identity and sexual identity and all those things, right. biblical ideas of what the family is supposed to look like. And a lot of times there's a real danger that we compartmentalize our life. That's good. <laughs> right? That I serve God in this area, but in my relationships and in my family relationships, I have a secular mindset. Oh, that's good. Right? When God wants a biblical mindset to cover every aspect of our lives. Amen. And because we've done that, it has seriously affected our society in the moment in which we're living. And so we're going to spend, I don't know about you, and I, I like my marriage, but you know what? I want it to be better. Yes. My wife probably wants it to be better. All right? Uh, I like my children, and I think I have godly children. I love my grandchildren, but I want to make sure that I'm appropriating the values and the culture of the kingdom of God in my home and in my family, because here's what we do, right? I want to read, first of all, let's just read Romans 12, 1 and 2 real quickly before we get started. Because how many know the culture tries to change our perspective? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whether we realize it or not, we get impacted by culture. Yeah. We're constantly bombarded. Um, we're bombarded by what life should look like through social media. We compare ourselves to social media. Yeah. We compare ourselves to... Um, uh, what we think we should look like. We compare ourselves uh, in our homes, right? Our values to what is constantly put out. And we're in a moment right now where if uh, there's a cultural police and if, you know, you're not lining up with what the culture says, they're trying to cancel you. Right? But what does kingdom culture say? And so I want to read <laughs> Romans 12, 1 and 2. And uh, the writer of Romans says, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. It's interesting that they start off by talking about our bodies. And it says, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. So presenting your body to God is a spiritual form of worship? Yes. Right? It absolutely is. You know what marked Christians in the Roman Empire? You know what made them different? One of the things? They were sexually pure. Come on. Because pagans offered themselves to everything and everybody. Well, and, and there is a, a cultural press to push not just non-Christians, but Christians into the same way of living. And it goes on and says, and do not be conformed to this world, right? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, 
that which is good and acceptable and perfect. You know, God wants you to prove his will through how you live your life. Yes. yes. Right? The values that you hold, right. right? The way you live, the way you portray yourself on social media. Right? We're supposed to not be squeezed. And that's what that literally means, to be squeezed into the mold of the world. Right? Yes. right? Uh, you know, we're living a moment when certain songs win song of the year, and I can't even re- say the lyrics right now. But Christianity is trying to be canceled. Right. We've got to not be squeezed into the mold of the world, right? And the way the world system thinks. Okay? That's why it's great to worship like we did this morning. Right. It's great to be in the glory. But do you know, we've got a generation right now that doesn't know scripture. And I love being in the glory. I love how God's glory touches us and heals us and transforms us. But the word of God has to transform us as well, right? We've got whole parts of the church that are being deceived because they don't know scripture. And and, and systematic scripture, right? We're in a culture that picks and chooses certain scriptures when we need to look at the whole counsel of the word of God. Amen. So we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And now, very quickly, just as an introduction as well, I want us to turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Right? Ephesians chapter 5, and uh, we'll probably talk about this more in the days ahead. But how many of you know that marriage, you know, don't laugh when I say this, marriage should be an earthly reflection of a heavenly reality? How was your marriage this morning? Get ready. <laughs> Get ready for church. Did it feel like the glory realm when you were getting ready this morning? <laughs> but scripture says that when we're married, it is a reflection of Jesus and his church. Yeah. And let's read that in Ephesians 5, 31. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great. Man, marriage is a mystery, isn't it? (laughs) But I am speaking with reference, reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each individual among you also love his own wife, even as himself, and let the wife see to it that she respect her husband. Glory to God, hallelujah. So, so our, our, and I'm not saying nothing about that anymore, right? But, but marriage is about covenant. Yes. Right? And just as our relationship with Jesus, as us, as the bride of Christ, it's covenant. Yes, sir. Right? And so God, God, if you study scripture, the whole Bible really is about covenant. Now, there are multiple covenants in the Bible. This is really my, my message today. It's just an intro, but we live according to covenant. Yes. Right? And God's called people to make covenant with him throughout the earth and live in that covenant. And so marriage is a reflection of the covenant that we have with God as his church, but also that husbands and wives as single families have in the kingdom of God. Yes. Right? Your marriage is a reflection of the covenant of heaven. And God is very, very serious. And so it should be a reflection of heavenly realities. Amen. Now, this morning, we'll talk more about marriage in the next weeks. But I want, you know, it's some of you have heard a bit of my testimony and Jamie's testimony about how we met. Because I think that God once from the very beginning for us to have a supernatural realm in our marriage. Yeah. That begins in dating. Yeah. Or not dating. Or not dating. <laughs> right? But there are principles that we have to have even as we date and even as we allow God to bring us together with God's choice. Right. 
right? And not to be conformed to what the world says. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to go out and I'm just going to date person after person after person because I'm, just, I'm looking, right? And I'm going to sleep around and make sure that we're compatible. That, that's that's got us all in a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> right? And I'll touch on that more in just a little bit. But, you know, there's a way that God wants to lead us by His Spirit in all things, including how we date. Yes. Right? So, I just want us to talk about this morning. So, when I was in college, um, the Lord began to really deal with me. And he began to deal with me at one point, and he said, Andy, I don't want you to date. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> because they were lining up. <laughs> because let's face it, when you are a godly guy, college age, everybody's grandma is trying to fix you up. <laughs> but the Lord really spoke to me, and he said, you know, I, I want you to stop dating. Now, my journey may not be like your journey. I mean, God deals with us in different ways, okay? But this morning, I just want to give an example, you know, of how he led myself and how he led Jamie. Amen. And so I believe God can supernaturally speak to us who were to marry. Yes. yes. I believe he wants to. I believe he supernaturally puts people together. Now, if you're already married this morning, don't be asking God who the one is. <laughs> Lord, who am I supposed to be married to? Well, the person you're married to, that's God's choice. <laughs> And not somebody else's husband or wife, because that goofiness does happen. Wow. Right? Come on. Lord, who's my spouse? Well, it's not that guy over there married to that other lady or vice versa. No, God doesn't do that. Right. No matter what kind of voice you're hearing, because that's probably the voice of your flesh, and that's probably some devil of dead devil. Some spirit of lust that's directing you. Right. Right. So the Lord spoke to me. Now, you know, when God can speak to us, and that doesn't necessarily mean that that person's going to come riding in on a chariot of fire. <laughs> right? Or a blue angel usher them in and say, This is my choice for you, my son, my daughter. You know, and, and at the same time, God speaks supernaturally, but he also gives us biblical principles. Yeah. Right? If, if a drug addict asks you out, I would hope that you wouldn't ask the Lord, is this the one? <laughs> right? Or somebody that's been married six times before comes in, even if the Lord says, I'm the, that's the one, you better check that out. Because there are red flags. There are six red flags, but probably more than six. Right. What? When you're like, I'm going to be number seven. Or those people that they get married and their spouses keep dying. I, I'm not getting in that line. <laughs> so, Jamie, come on up. So, yeah, yeah. Put it right there. Yeah. That's enough of that. Yeah, that's enough. So. so, while he was in college, I was in elementary school, and. Um... Raise him up. A young man. Train them right, and they'll never depart from you. Wait a minute, that's scriptural, right? No, it's not it. It's all scriptural. That famous line from Revenge of the Nerds, I've been cruising the junior highs all day looking for a date. Sorry. Young people, you hurt yourself. 
Okay, so let me tell you a little bit of my um, my hearing the Lord around the same time that he was hearing the Lord. I was 13 years old, for real. And, um, and my family had made the decision to move to from our Baptist church to, what many of you know, Faith Center Church, which was a more charismatic, you know, we had no paradigm for this, but my mom had been really hungry, started searching, and we made this decision as a family to do this. And let me just interject. Every decision we make will affect generations. Because if they had not followed the Lord in that moment and moved to that place, because shortly after that, I I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And if we had not made that move as a family and dove in as a family to know the Lord and develop this relationship we didn't know was available, this would not be, nor would this be. Every decision we make as families, huge. So I got filled with the Spirit when I was about 13. And I began to hear the voice of God and start developing that relationship. And and one of the very first things I ever heard the Lord say to me was, um, I want you to really set yourself aside. And I'm going to, you're going to get married when you're 18. That was like one of the first things I heard from the Lord. <clears throat> so I began practicing hearing his voice and developing that and being real quiet about it because we didn't have paradigms for this to discuss these things and to all of this stuff. So I had journals full of, you know, my conversations with the Lord at that age. But, um, and, and I just want to say, you know, there were, there were people who came along, guys who came along between that age of 15 and 16 and like, this is not a good thing. And I, I'll never forget sitting in my mom's office and this guy was pursuing me and like, you know, you're just glad somebody likes you. You know, you're just, because we're stupid at 16. I'm just going to tell you right now. We don't make good decisions without the Lord. But you know what? Your 16 year old can make wise decisions and they can hear the Lord. Put them in the environment, press on them to hear the Lord. And my mom sat and looked at me across from her desk. And I don't know if you remember this. I will never forget it as long as I live. These are my parents. And as long as I live, I will never forget this. She sat across the, the, her desk from me and she said, <clears throat> Are you going to marry him? And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Because, you know, yes, I'm believing the Lord for the right thing, da, 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 but you get caught up in the stupid. Yeah. And she's like, Are you going to marry him? And not in a like, she was okay. I mean, I know she wasn't okay with it, but she was very, you know, not with an attitude in her voice. Are you going to marry him? And it hit me like a ton of bricks, and I just thought, I don't know what my destiny is, but it's not to live in his mother's basement. And it's, <laughs> and that's really all I see coming out of that guy's life. And I'm not, I wasn't destined to be the spiritual leader of my life and house. That's all I knew. So it's like, no, into that. How far do you want me to go? I don't know what you're saying next if I want to talk about her. Yeah, I mean, I can share a little bit too. And, you know, and, and the thing was, even though the Lord spoke to me, I was still open. Right? Because I knew God was going to bring that person. And, you know, sometimes people would say, hey, you know, you need to meet this person or come to dinner with me. I'm going to introduce you to this person. And I, I was open to that. And so I just want to say, even if the Lord speaks to you, you have to be open. Yeah. Right? And, uh, but in the middle of that, I would always be like, God, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, she's kind of cute, you know, and uh, so I'd really ask the Lord, and you know, He would say, usually, always, no. Usually, <laughs> no, He Sometimes. would. He would say, no, and, uh, and and so I was just like, oh God, are you sure? Because I can help you with this. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I think we have to really be open to what the Lord is saying. And not and, and if you have trouble hearing those things, because let's be honest, that's a very emotional thing. Yes. Have common sense from scriptural advice. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. good. And leaders. And leaders. Yeah. And we'll get to that. Yes. So go ahead and All right. So when I was seventeen, um I was like, Lord, I remember the promise that you, you said I was gonna get married when I'm eighteen and None of these people I know are going to make the cut. <laughs> and I had a lot of really close, I had two really, really close friends that were guys. I was, they were, I was not marrying them. But they were like some of my best friends. We, we talked all the time. We did stuff together. But, I mean, as a big group of us, I knew. It's all, I mean, they were in church with us. But I knew this was not it. And so I just kept pressing at him. Lord. You said, and I'm, I'm 17. <laughs> you said we're going to get married when I'm 18. You said, you said, you said. You know what? Keep reminding the Lord of the promises. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And then he zapped me bad. I mean, it was, he said, he said to me, that is my promise, but what if I don't fulfill it? Will you still follow me all the days of your life like you said you would when you were 13? Will you still love me all the days of your life? And will you still pursue me like you are now? Right. What if I don't fulfill this promise? Now, there's not a lot of theology for that. It goes against all of our charismatic ways. Right. I know, but in our charismatic life, I bless me, Lord. It's all about me. And so I spent the next weeks, which seemed like months and months, which it wasn't, dying to that. And getting my heart not in this, God, you're sad, where's my husband? It just, oh God, I surrender and I'll make you really, really Lord. And I'm going to serve you for more than a promise. I'm going to serve you and love you because of who you are. And if I live alone with cats, which I would not alone, but it's okay. You know, so that's where I began to just really die to even the promise God had given me because it was my heart focus. Because He promised me, and so I didn't let that die. So there came a moment for me when the Lord was really directing me, and I knew that I was supposed to move from Arden, where I was finishing up in college. He was directing me to move to Shawnee, Oklahoma. And so I was just like, oh, I'm going to move into this one place in Shawnee, this ministry where God's calling me to be equipped and to be trained and to be sent to the nations. And, you know, I know there's a lot of young people there, so I'm pretty excited about it. And, uh, but in the process of that, I was invited by some friends uh, to visit Faith Center Church in Sulphur. And uh, so that I could transition into moving to Shawnee. And so I went, uh, I remember going a couple of times. I was like, oh, that was great, you know. And the Lord said, no, I want you to go back. And so I kept going in that few months period. And uh, one day I was... Wait for my spark. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. So I spent this season dying, and I really had just said... Okay, it's off the table. It is what it is. God, I love you. We had a prayer time on Sunday mornings before church, and my 17-year-old self was just like my 49, 48-year-old self, almost 49-year-old self, and had to be involved in everything. And we're having prayer time. I'm going to be prayer time, you know? I just did those things. And so I'm in the circle in the prayer time in the back of the church, wherever we were having, I remember it was the fellowship hall kind of place we're in this circle and Andy comes in with these people and I still married him <laughs> okay so nothing he walks in nothing's phasing me and so they're, 
so he's they're introducing him to everyone in this circle. He's shaking hands, he's shaking hands, he gets to me, he shakes my hand. No, but the Lord spoke to me. This is your husband. And I was just like, all right. Because I had died. I know, so there was nothing there. I was like, all right. Lord, I'll carry my cross. And this is the one. I'm a little disappointed. But... I didn't know who he was. Nothing. I just, we're just introduced. This is Andy, this is Jamie, me, Andy. And I was like, okay. He, I, he never even noticed me. So don't, don't even. It took him weeks to even notice I was alive. I knew she was really young. <laughs> I was trying to stay out of jail. <laughs> So I've been going here visiting for a few weeks, and uh, one day I was praying. And uh, as I began to pray, uh, I saw Jamie's face. And I, I knew nothing about her. I didn't know her name. I didn't know her age. I knew nothing. Didn't but, even know her name. Never even, nothing. But I began to see her face, and suddenly the Lord opened up her heart. And I saw virtue. And I saw purity, and I saw excellence. So I'm just going to say, girls, guys are really looking for that, whether you think they are or not. Right, and don't be the one that they experiment on, and then go looking later for somebody that has purity, virtue, and excellence. And I just was like, Oh, God, what's going on? Because I knew at that moment that I was supposed to marry this girl. And I was very scared because I knew nothing about her. So my friend that had invited me to church originally, they lived here in Ardmore. And so after that experience, uh, um, she worked at Mountain View Mall, which is now the shops at Ardmore and everything. And so I was there one day. And that's when people actually had stores and stuff. And uh, so, so I had gone by and I was talking to her and I, you know, nonchalantly said, so I found out her name was Jamie through a mutual friend. And I asked my friend, so tell me about this girl, Jamie. And she just started telling me a little bit about who she was. And little did I know, two or three days before I went and asked my friend about Jamie, the Lord had given her a vision of us ministering together as husband and wife all over the world. So God's good, amen? amen. And God is supernatural. Now, my friend was wise, and she didn't tell me about that. Because sometimes there are things, secrets God tells us, He doesn't want us to tell at that moment. Yeah, that's right. yeah. that's so good. And she actually didn't tell me that she'd seen that, I think, our wedding day. Because she wasn't. In case you changed our mind. Yeah. In case she was wrong. But but at the same time, not to manipulate things. You know, and, and let God do His work. And honestly, let us decide. Because I think sometimes, even though when God does stuff, He still does give you a choice. Right. So. Well, at the same time, I had gone. I remember going to lunch with my dad. And it's like, we had this weird church, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we were at lunch, and um, the dynamic of, what well, the services were, times were different, it was a weird time. And um, so we, I don't know, I think it was just us. I don't remember anyone else at the table, but there could have been, but my memory just is us. And um, my tank goes, so, you like that new boy who's coming to church? Something like that. I'm just like, we have these discussions. <laughs> you know, I just was like, no, Dad, I only have eyes for you. He's like, whatever. <laughs> so at that moment, I knew he knew. That was how I knew he knew. But he later told us that was one of the days that he also had heard the Lord when Andy had walked through. The Lord said, that will be your son-in-law. Wow. It's good. Look at my dad. Don't, what do, you want... Them to know it was the Lord. I want him on my side. <laughs> yes. So anyway, there's more of those stories that we could tell, but right. it just, you know, those little things that were huge for us. So I found out who Jamie was. I found out her number, and back 
when the days when there were no cell phones. Yeah, I that. Right? I I I called her. Okay, but wait. So she calls me, and I had a phone in my room because I was one of those lucky 17-year-olds, and I didn't have to stretch it all the way from the kitchen. I had my own phone. Y'all are really lucky. No kidding. <laughs> With its own cord in my room, plugged in kind of thing. So I'm on the phone because I think they thought, just let her have her own phone because she's on the phone all the time. So I'm talking to my friend, my boyfriend, not friend, not boyfriend, but friend, that's a boy, because I talk to Troy all the time, and we're talking, and he and a few others... They knew. I'm going to marry him. Tell them I heard the Lord. So I'm talking to Troy, and I get the caller ID. Caller, call, call wait, and beep. Beep, beep. I'm like, oh, somebody's calling me. I said, Troy, I'll be right back. Unless it's Andy. And he's laughing. He goes, he'll be right back. And I said, I don't know. So I switched over. It was Andy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So we talked, um, we made arrangements to meet, um, and on our first date, which I think was, it was me coming back through town, and a uh, super cold night. It's crazy cold. We were working at the Jesus house. My parents were in Jesus house, and I was like, I'll be at Jesus house on Friday night. You can stop by. So Sulphur is such a small town, they'd given me directions and said, turn at the stoplight, and forgot there were actually two stoplights. <laughs> I was lost, I think, and uh, we finally met, and we were at parties in Sulphur, Oklahoma, and I'm going to say, don't do this. Ever. But we both began to tell each other, the Lord's spoken to us that we're supposed to get married. And so stupid. don't ever do that. That's so creepy. <laughs> right? What what a line. Hey baby, the Lord says I'm gonna marry you. So That's a sign you in heaven. Look, there's glory on me for you, baby. No, don't do that. Right. Do you know how many people have told us told us when Olivia was 14, 15, 16 that the Lord spoke to them with there to marry her? And I was like, move on. <laughs> you you know what? Stay faithful for the next two to three years and we'll see. That's what I would say to them. Two weeks later, they found somebody else the Lord spoke to them about. So, yeah, yeah don't use that line. Right. Unless you're willing to live it out. Right? So, we just began to develop and build a relationship. I'm living in Shawnee. She's living in Sulphur. And uh, we just walked together in purity, building this relationship. Uh, and... God orchestrated something very special. I, I got married when I was 18. <laughs> but you know what? The boundaries that had to be set, we had to set strong boundaries because no, we really liked each other. That's a good thing. And that's the thing. I know some people get scared and they think, well, what if God speaks to me that I'm supposed to be with someone that I don't like or I'm not attracted to? It's going to be rough. It's, but I mean, the Lord knows our hearts, right? strategically does things to bring us together. Now, I do want to say, I'm going to give some tips in just a moment on on dating supernaturally, okay, and preparing for marriage supernaturally. But I, I just want to say that no matter how much God supernaturally orchestrates you being together, you still need to work on a good marriage. Yes. You still have to have tools every day that you can't just, oh, we're in the glory realm every day and everything's good. No, I mean. No, every day I wake up thinking, I am still smarter than you. Why can't you do not do this? Yeah. It's just. Wow. <laughs> every day, every day he wakes up thinking, you're a Lord woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you better know it's the Lord. Right? But you still have to work on good communication. Yes, yes. Right? You still have to work on respect to one another. You still have to work on forgiveness every day. You still have to work on honor and, and choosing to walk together even when things aren't good. Because you can't just live in, you can't live in the glory, but you have to live in maturity at the same time. You know, you have to choose every day to walk. And, uh, you know, supernatural courtship is really only the beginning. Yes. Right? 
to the answer. Yeah, okay. because there are, there are things that are going to happen. Life gets really, really rough, and things get really, really ugly. No matter how ordained your marriage is, it's just going to be rough and bumpy and ugly sometimes. And, I mean, there were moments I wanted to walk away. There are moments I'm sure he wanted to walk away. But you know what kept me? The voice of the Lord that I've heard. Yeah. It's the first, voice, first time I heard his voice, and I heard it so clearly. The second time I heard his voice so, so clearly was when he shook my hand, and the Lord said, you're going to marry him. Guess what? God didn't change his mind. And so because I knew I had, had the right one, <laughs> I, I, I could stand on that. You're like, nope, we got to get some tools to work this out. We've got, I mean, we used to do Danny Silk's videos every, every year or two just to stay married. It's true. It doesn't matter how we're dating. I mean, now we have those skills and now we have, you know. It's but we still have to keep them we fresh. We still have to work on it. Right. We, we still have those moments when we look at each other, especially usually her, and said, I don't feel connected to you right now. What do we need to do? That's good. That's good. You know, because that's reality. It's reality. Yeah. yeah. So here's just a few tips when you're supernaturally courting, okay? Talk to leaders. Yeah. Talk to parents. It's okay. Talk to role models, especially people with healthy relationships. Don't get advice from people who are a train wreck, <laughs> who've been married seven times. Right. Or have a horrible marriage. Or have a horrible marriage. Don't get their advice. Why would you want advice from somebody who's not doing it successfully? Right. Right? But but talk to leaders, talk to people so they can pray with you. Not so they can control you, but so that they can advise you. Amen. You need uh, you need that input. Okay. Number two, this is a fun one. Don't sleep together. First of all, it's sin if you're not married. Secondly, you are not going to make a godly decision if you're sleeping together trying to decide if you should get married or not. Because guess what? You're not thinking clearly. Come on, y'all. You're being controlled by passion in the flesh rather than destiny and scripture and common sense. Right? You don't even know that person. And it, it jacks with everything and every decision that you're going to make. And this generation needs to hear that. Yeah. Well, it's so acceptable now in the church even. Yeah. Another thing is because when you have sex with someone, the Bible says that you become one flesh. And you create a soul tie with that person. Yes. That God intended that to be a blessing in your marriage, that you're one. And so if you've slept with multiple people and you come into a relationship, you're bringing lots of baggage and soul ties into your relationship. Now, God can heal that and redeem that, but we don't understand, and this is why I believe many marriages do fail, because people are coming into marriages with multiple sex ties, soul sex ties, soul ties with people that they slept with. Yeah. But you know what? We need to talk about this in the church yeah. because the culture yeah. is inundating us with this. When God said, I set these things up to be a blessing and not a curse. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's a big one. Well, and because of that, we had to set strong boundaries for ourselves because we both wound up living in Shawnee. So we didn't have a mama and daddy standing there, you know, who would have cracked some We weren't heads. living together. We she were not, lived with I lived with a family, but he had his own apartment. But we really, really quickly figured out, we can't stay in his apartment by ourselves. We like each other. Right. It's a good problem. We didn't stay anywhere by ourselves ever until we were married. Yeah. Yeah. Those things are important, okay? Um, I already commented on this, but the person you're married to now is God's choice for you. Don't be sitting here today thinking, well, maybe I missed it. No. <laughs> you're it's too it. late. Make it work. That's God's choice. Jim, you're in it. 
<laughs> but we can all work on having a great marriage yes. and not being on autopilot just because we've been married a long time. Right? I mean, we've been married 30 years. We've been married longer than we in our lives and before we were married, right? And so, but you know what? We still have to always think, how can we have good tools? And it usually just involves me buying patio furniture or, I'm just kidding, kind of. Um, and here's one final one. And this is so common sense, but we're so bad about this. Never, and Jamie touched on it, never date someone that you wouldn't marry. Why? Well, I'm just going to have fun. Well, that's going to get you in trouble. Right? Because you're going to get emotionally and probably physically involved with someone that's going to get you off track. Right? Your life, your destiny, the destiny of your future children and grandchildren is worth more than that. And you know what? Yeah, God's God, you know, God wants to do so many good things. And, and, and if this morning you're like, well, I've messed up, you know, God restores all things. Yeah. No matter where you are in your life, God can create healthy marriages, healthy relationships, healthy families. And so that's what we're going to explore. I don't know how long we're going to do this, but I think if we're really going to change the culture, we have to say things like this. Because we have a generation that has no idea sometimes what healthy families and marriages look like. And it's put our nation in a very, very terrible state. It's put the church in a very weak state. So God wants to take us and having healthy, healthy relationships because you can have a supernatural marriage, right? Whether God spoke to you, maybe you're like, oh, did we do it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> you're here now. <laughs> you're here now, and you're together, and God's going to build something generationally yes. in all of us that's not just going to bless our home. It's going to bless our churches. It's going to bless our families, our extended families. It's going to embrace. What would happen if fatherlessness wow. was no longer an issue in our culture? Wow. Our, our country, our culture would look completely different wow. yes. if fathers would take their place. Wow. Yes. These are things that we have to talk about to really, really transform culture because it really does begin in the family. And God wants to direct us. Amen. Anything else you want to say? I just want to say, if you're like, well, this has nothing to do with me. Yes, it does. Because yes. the whole point is you can hear the voice of God and he's not keeping it a secret. Right. You don't have to fall face forward into it. He really wants to speak to you, not just about this, not just about that, but everything. He has a plan and he has a purpose. And when we hear his voice and we know what the plan is, we can stick to it. Yes. I mean, right now I'm faced with some situations that reality is do this. But I know what the Lord said. So even though everything looks like I need to do this in the natural, I know what he said. And so hanging on to this, I'm like, God, move. I, you're the, you you promised. You're not talking about me. No. Okay. I'm gonna, you, no. The other day I was like, I really don't know that I can live on my own ever again. I am so spoiled. And that's a good thing, right? Yeah. I like it. But no, but just there, his promises are true. And when everything comes rushing at you, whether it's in marriage or it's just all your life and all the decisions and everything that you're called to do or not called to do or whatever you're in, my goodness, if you don't know what his plan is, you will crater and you'll walk the wrong way because situations will turn you that way. And we know that God can redeem all things, right? He can, he can take us out 
of bad decisions and some of those things, but we have those stories too. Okay? Yes, we, do. we have those stories, right? But the reality is, there God's wanting to raise up a generation now that can walk with Him, yes, amen, without compromise and with yes. blessing from the very beginning. Yes. Amen. Let's just stand together this morning. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for your glory. And Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your word. And we want to thank you that you're releasing a grace, Father God, that will just bring us into obeying you and following you. Because Lord, it's not, your, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so, Father, you just want to release blessing upon individuals. Father God, those who are seeking to get married, Father, you want to release blessing on existing marriages, existing families, and parents and children and extended family. Father, I, I pray that in, in this place and in this city, Father, heaven coming to earth would look like healthy marriages and healthy families. Father, it would look like, Lord, that there wouldn't be a crisis in the, in the foster care system, but it would look like redeemed families. Father, it, it would look like healthy families, husbands and wives loving one another, parents loving children and children loving parents. Father, I pray in this whole area, this whole realm, this whole place, that you would let heaven come. And Father, that families would carry your glory. Father, families uh, in, in your church would model. Lord, right now statistics say that the church looks just like outside the church when it comes to divorce, when it comes to those things. But Father, I pray that you would bring kingdom values, kingdom blessing, kingdom culture in this place, in this church, in this city, Lord, that kingdom cultures would spring up. And Father, we would demonstrate a heavenly reality in the earthly realm. So Father, I thank you. I just ask for grace to touch all of us, no matter where we are. And, and, and Father, bring the blessing of heaven the culture of the kingdom, in everything we do, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Wow. So, praise God. God's good. He's faithful. He wants to release his blessing on all of you guys so that we could really...